Hi, this is my combined book and movie review of How I Live Now by Meg Rossov. I really wanted to read this book before the movie came out and I already read Picture Me Gone by Meg Rossov, which is her most recent book. This one was published in 2004 at a time when there weren't a lot of young adult novels and a lot of people I've talked to have read this and absolutely adore it. Also just a warning before I start talking about the book, I will be discussing eating disorders in this video. The book is about Daisy, an American teenager who is sent to live with her cousins in the UK because her situation at home with her dad and her new stepmom isn't going very well. Her cousins and their mom live in the countryside in England and she's never really met them before. It becomes clear very early on that Daisy is not an easy teenager to deal with. She's there and she has to learn to adapt. Meanwhile there's this threat of a third world war and her aunt is actually kind of an expert in the field and she has to go to some kind of convention abroad and she leaves the kids alone for a couple of days and and then the war breaks out. The writing in this is pretty interesting. It's a bit choppy. Uh, there's no punctuation for dialogue, but sometimes there are like beautiful sentences and observations. The writing style in this was very, very similar to the one in Picture Me Gone, her latest novel, so I was already pretty familiar with it. I quite liked it. It was just like a stream of teenage thoughts. One of the interesting parts of this book is that she falls in love with her cousin, so there is a casual bit of incest. It's never really discussed that much in the book, besides them kind of acknowledging that maybe they shouldn't be doing this. This is at the point where the kids are all living in a barn a little bit further from the house so they can't really be found and they're just living there without any rules, without any parents, not knowing what's going to happen. The youngest one is Piper who is nine years old and plays quite a big role in the book. This book is very much about a very slow survival process in a very slow apocalyptic scenario which I really enjoy because when the war begins there is one major attack but what they experience is just loss of electricity, the inability to go to other places, there are no more doctors, medicine runs out, like that kind of stuff. And also no one really knows what's going on, they know that the enemy is there, but that's about it. Eventually the army kind of sweeps through the country and evacuates the kids and they get split up and then the rest of the book is mainly Daisy and Piper traveling across the country trying to get back to the boys. And Daisy is very much focused on Edmund, who she is completely in love with and kind of shares this weird connection with. The humor in it is quite like sharp and dark, just a kind of sarcastic teenage humor. In the book you kind of slowly discover that she has an eating disorder and she mentions it in a lot of different ways and I think eventually she actually like comes out and, and says it. A lot of her journey is about her breaking out of that obsession and being forced to really get close to people. The book is kind of slow, there's no kind of big reveal at the end, but I quite enjoyed it. Okay now we're moving on to the movie. It came out in the beginning of a October was in cinemas for about three weeks. It was on buses everywhere here, but apparently it didn't do well. It featured Saoirse Ronan, as you can see on the cover here. So let's start at the beginning with the title sequence, which was really, really cool. It looked like it was filmed with a handy cam. Great font, great music. The soundtrack in general was really good for this movie. Everything was beautiful and blurry, just the way I like it. Beautiful magic hour sunlight. And a lot of like landscape scenes. Think Harry Potter 7.1. The girl who played Piper, who was like the nine-year-old cousin in the book was adorable. She had red hair and freckles and was just jumping around all over the place. I really really liked her. In my head for some reason I'd seen like a really skinny mousy girl with long brown hair but I think that this worked really well. Edmund was pretty attractive but a bit too broody. He was just standing there staring at her to the point where it gets a little bit too serious and a little bit ridiculous. Also there's some things in movies that you just shouldn't say out loud. Like it might work for the book, just don't say it out loud. Any kind of romantic tension that there was kind of had the opposite effect and just made us giggle. From the beginning of the movie, it is very clear that there is a war coming. It's a lot more obvious than in the book. There are two really striking scenes. First of all, I think when she arrives at the house, there's just like a V formation of fighter planes that fly over. And then when the actual like bomb explodes in London, the way that the environment and the animals react to that was really good as well. I loved all the scenes where the kids were running around the fire by themselves and swimming in the river and just being free, not knowing what was about to happen. And even when the war was happening, when they weren't affected, their life just continued. Their survival trip and some other scenes were pretty gruesome. There's a point where Daisy has to shoot someone and they have some really cool crazy editing, kind of like in The Hunger Games with the Tracker Jacker hallucinations. And I was very happy that like in the book there was no massive fight in the end because you see that sometimes movies kind of want to put that in even if it isn't in the book but fortunately they did not. Her eating disorder wasn't 
as clear as it was in the book. I think what they focused on more is that she's just troubled in general. You can hear all these voices in her head and it kind of sounds like the voice of her therapist. Well, you can hear that kind of buzzing through her head. She's obsessively washing her hands and taking a pill. And I thought that that was very, very well done. There were some changes in who dies, but nothing that really bothered me. It worked really well for the film. One thing I really didn't like was the flashback scene and the colors they used to make it look like a flashback scene were way too bright and really weird. They also did some weird stuff when it came to the connection between Daisy and Edmund, the kind of supernatural element to it. I didn't hate it, I didn't love it, it was kind of strange. So in general, everything but the romance was really really well executed and I did quite enjoy this movie even though it's a bit gruesome but beautiful at the same time. In the comments you can let me know if you have read this book and if you've seen the movie and tell me what you thought. I'll see you guys later. Doei!